This LOS is calculate and interpret the money duration of a bond and price value of a basis point, PVBP. Okay, with this learning outcome statement, we're only going to look at one slide of uh, theory with a couple of formulas, and then we're just going to jump into five practice questions. That's the best way to get on top of the calculations. So the money duration of a bond and the price value of a basis point, starting with the money duration, the formula is the annu uh, annualized modified duration times the price, uh, full price of the bond. And the change in the uh, full price of the bond equals the negative money duration times the change in yield, okay? Now getting to the um, pr uh, price value of a basis point, the uh, calculation is the price of the bond when rates decrease uh, minus the price of the bond when rates increase divided by two, okay? And here you've got to understand that uh, in the numerator, it's we're looking at the uh, full price is calculated by decreasing and increasing the yield to maturity by one basis point only. Okay, so it's looking at the uh, price value of a basis point. So we're looking at the change in price from the change in one basis point. Okay, so remember, 100 basis points is 1%. This is how I always do it. Uh, 10 basis points, therefore, would be 0 0.001. And one basis point, therefore, would be 0 0.00. Zero, 01. Okay, that's the way I'd, sometimes I write it out. Uh, you know, when I was first starting uh, to learn the CFA, how much is one basis points? 100 basis points is 1%, 0 0.01. 10 basis points, 0 0.001. And one basis points, 0 0.0001. I've seen a lot of candidates in uh, practice classes make mistakes with, uh, with their keystrokes with regards to the number of decimals. I see it all the time. So again, that's you might be shaking your head saying, yeah, I know that, tell me something I don't know. But I've seen that mistake made and that's just a, a little tip for you. I write it out and then I've got no doubt that I'm doing the right keystrokes, okay? So the uh, PVBP is also called the PV01, standing for the price value of a 01 or present value of a 01, where 01 means one basis point, okay? In the United States, it's commonly called DV01, or the dollar value of uh, one basis point change. And again, a related statistic, sometimes called a basis point value, or BPV, is the money duration times 0 0.0001, which I put in brackets there. That's your one basis point. Anyhow, enough of the theory and the, and the formulas. Let's just jump in and do uh, five uh, practice questions now. The first practice question, if a bond is trading at 96.829 with a yield to maturity of 4.53% and a duration equal to 5.38, its price value of a basis point, PVBP, is closest to A, 0.0439, B, 0.0521, or C, 0.0538. Okay, before we get into the solution for that practice question, again, I want to show you the importance of the glossary. So now I went into the glossary for the price value of a basis point, and this is the definition. Uh, price value of a basis point is a, a version of money duration. It is an estimate of the change in the full price of a bond. So we're looking at the change in the full price of a bond given a one basis point change in the yield to maturity. Okay, you're gonna see that this question was a little bit tricky that's why I said the best way to get on top of things is to do as many practice questions as possible because this is a two-step question, okay? And uh, C is the uh, answer to the first step and B is the correct uh, answer to the, to the question, okay? So remember that the price value of the basis point is uh, to calculate it, it's the price multiplied by the percentage change in value for a one basis point change in the interest rates, okay? Then here, if we look, the duration multiplied by one basis point multiplied by 100% is the percentage change in the value of the bond for a one basis point change in interest rate. So step number one, we're gonna calculate the percentage change in the value of the bond, but step number two, the PVBP, is the price multiplied by that percentage change, okay? So C, that's the percentage change, but B is the correct one 
that's the change in the price, okay? That's the PVBP. So a little bit of a tricky question, but once you've done these a few times, you say, aha, I've got it now. That's why I always say, practice as many questions as possible. So let's just bring up the calculator. And before we do that, they, we can see they've given us the duration is 5.38, okay? So just let me bring up the calculator again. So we're gonna do 5.38. We're going to multiply it by the one basis point, 0 0.0001. There's three zeros for one basis point. And then we're going to multiply by 100, okay? And that gives us the percentage change, 0 0.0538. But then what we're going to do is we're going to um, multiply that by the price, okay? So we're going to multiply that by the 96.82. And uh, we're going to divide by 100. And you can see we're getting 0 0.052094, which is closest to B, 0 0.0521. Okay, because it's 0 0.0538%. Uh, That's why I divided by 100. Multiplied by 98, uh, 6.829, and we've got the correct answer, which is B. Okay, so a bit of a tricky question, but uh, not impossible. Two steps to it. Step number one. You need to calculate the percentage change in the value of the price of the bond, which is the one basis point times the duration times uh, 100%, okay? That gives you the percentage change. Multiply that by the price and you've got the PVBP. This is really a bit of a review question, so let's just be careful. A bond is selling for 98.2. It is estimated that the price will fall to 96.6 if yields rise 30 basis points and that the price will rise to 100.1 if yields fall 30 basis points. Based on these estimates, the duration of the bond is closest to A, 1.78, B, 5.94, or C, 11.88. Okay, I really put this question in as just a bit of a review because we're just asking to calculate the uh, duration here, okay? So remember, it's the price if the yield declines minus the price if the yield rises. Uh, divided by two times the initial price times the change in yield, okay? So the price will rise to 100.1 minus 96.6 for the numerator and times two times the original price, 98.2 times 0 0.003 because we're looking at the three basis points. So again, uh, you know, if, I, if it was 3%, it would be 0 0.303. If it's uh, 30 basis points, it's 0 0.003. So just get your decimals right, okay? I won't bring up the calculator on this one in the interest of saving a bit of time. You can work through it, but the correct answer is B. It's gonna be 5.94. That was just a quick review uh, thrown in to review how to calculate uh, the duration of a bond. Another practice question. An analyst uses a valuation model to estimate the value of an option-free bond at 92.733 to yield 11%. If the value is 94.474 for a 60 basis point decrease in yield and 91.041 for a 60 basis point increase in yield, the effective duration of the bond is closest to A, 1.85, B, 3.09, or C, 6.17. Again, just put this uh, question in to just be a bit of a review, you know, at this point, go through some of the concepts we've been learning. So again, uh, this one's asking for the effective duration. So we're gonna look on the numerator, the change in the prices. So I always say big minus the small. So you can see if the value is 94.474 for a decrease in yield, because we're looking at the price of a decrease yield minus the price of an increase in yield, and uh, 91.041 for a 60 basis point increase in yield. So that's the numerator divided by two times original uh, price times the change in the yield, and it's 60 basis points. So we know uh, zero one would be 100 uh, basis points. So we're gonna do two zeros and then the six, okay? Just get that right. Won't bring up the calculator in the interest of time. I think you've got it now. Calculate the numerator divided by the denominator. We get 3.09, so the correct answer is B, okay? So a nice little quick review question on effective duration. Okay, two more practice questions to finish this LOS. The first one, the bonds issued by ALS Corp are currently priced at 108.5 and they're option free. Based on a portfolio manager's valuation model, a 10 basis point rise in interest rates will result in the bond price falling to 106.5, while a 10 basis point fall in interest rates will result in the bond price rising to 110, okay? 
The market value of the portfolio manager's holdings of ALS bonds is $2 million. The expected change in the market value of this holding for a 100 basis point change in interest rate will be closest to A, $124,000, B, $322,600, or C, $645,200. Okay, this is a nice question because they want to know the market value for a 100 basis point change in interest rate. At least they've made this uh, part a, a little bit easier. Uh, they could change that up and make this to be a really tricky question. Again, this is a little bit on the harder side of the CFA uh, continuum, but because it's a two-part question. But once you see it, um, you know, uh, you're going to understand that it's not that difficult. Step number one, we need to calculate the duration of the bond, okay? So that's the price of the yield declines minus the price of the yield rises divided by two times the initial price times the change in yield in decimal. Now, uh, the change in yield in decimal, we're looking at a 10 basis point uh, change in the interest rate. So just be careful because later on we're talking about a 100 basis point change to the market value. But no, for the, uh, for the calculation of the duration, we're looking at the 10%. So remember, 100 basis points would be 0.01, 10 basis points would be 001. So that is the uh, correct number that we've got in the uh, denominator there. So when we calculate the uh, duration of the bond, 110 minus 106.5 divided by 2 times 108.5 times 0 0.001, we're going to get 16.13, okay? But we're not done yet. That's part one. Part two, then, is the uh, approximate percentage change in the value of the holdings. The dollar duration is going to be, uh, we're going to take that uh, 0.1613 um, uh, because we're taking the 16.13 that we're dividing by 100, okay? So it's 0.1613 times the value of the portfolio, 2 million, we're getting 322,600, okay? Now, as I said, they could change that up because they could, uh, uh, the way that they could make this question more complicated would be for a 50 basis points, okay? Or 75 basis points. If it was for 50 basis points, we'd take that 16.13 and we'd multiply it by 0.5. If it was for 75 basis points, we'd take that 16.13 and we'd multiply it by 0.75. You see that? But at least they made the second part of the question a little bit easier. Anyhow, not impossible, but a two-step question. That's why I said, uh, you know, we do as many practice questions as possible. You start to see things. Step number one, calculate the duration. Step number two, calculate the dollar duration, okay? And they gave us 100 basis points, so we're using the duration uh, without any adjustments to the number. So finish this LOS with one last practice question. A fixed income portfolio manager owns a 5 million par value non-callable bond. The bond's duration is 5.6 and the current market value is 5,125,000. The dollar duration of the bond is closest to A, 280,000, B, 287,000, or C, 700,000. Okay, nice to finish on a bit of an easier question, okay? So a bond's dollar duration is the expected price change given 100, um, uh, you know, value change given 100 basis point change in yield. So in this case, the dollar duration, you take the 5.6, multiply it by the 100 basis points, multiply by the market value of the portfolio. So if I just bring up the calculator very quickly, it's 5.6 times 0 0.01 times 5, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 3, and we've got 287,000. The correct answer is B, okay? So that's not a 90 uh, second question. If you're fully up to speed on, to, on how to calculate the dollar duration, again, what they could do is they could change that question. They can add a little bit to it saying, what's the dollar change if, um, you know, based on a 50 basis point change in rates? Because again, the dollar duration is the expected price change given 100 basis points, all right? So we were using the 100 basis points. We weren't making any adjustment, but just be on the lookout for that. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.